Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our weekly Next Level webinar series. As always, we're going to get started with a short video for those coming in, and then we'll go through our daily checklist. So to let some time for everyone to come in, we will play a short video from Foundation of the World. Has been set a path has been set to port you pretty through Cisco partnering with the non-profit non Foundation of the World to supply Haitian students with networking equipment for an IT lab. For an IT lab. Cisco donated networking Cisco pods donated networking with cameras, with cameras bottles, switches, switches, and routers, and routers so, that these so that these future leaders, future leaders can learn, can learn, grow, and grow, innovate. And innovate. Cisco's global flagship Cisco's social global impact flagship. program, the Cisco Networking Academy, has been functioning for almost 20 years. Cisco partners with schools, governments, and nonprofits across the world and have trained almost 1 million students a year in IT. In partnership with Cisco, the founders of the nonprofit Foundation of the World, Reginald Liget and Farrell Liget, are at the forefront of the tech push in Haiti. Cisco's mission is to connect people, places, ideas, and things across its secure network. Haiti is now a part of that network and is looking forward to a bright future, despite the nation's unrest, because between uncertainty and hope, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. And welcome to our Next Level webinar series. Today is a special one, uh, and this week is a special week. We have two webinars this week. Our first one is with John Lopez to speak about professional etiquette. Before we get started, as always, on the right-hand side of your screen is where you'll be able to chat with us. So we do have a chat button where you can go in and pose any questions, any comments that you would like. Um, you will also have our main screen, which you can see me, you can see John. Um, over here is where you will see your slides. And this is also where you'll see videos like you just saw earlier. On the right-hand side, you will also see polls. So if we were to ask you a poll during the presentation, that's where you'll answer it. We also do have a speak button. So if you would like to speak and ask John a question or make a comment about what he's teaching us today, then you can press the speak button and I'll be able to let you into the meeting. So we're happy to have you guys today. Uh, again, I'm here with John Lopez. John Lopez. Cisco professional. He's your lecturer today. He has 25 plus experience in manufacturing, product development, and IT, and he focuses on client operations and business models. So he's been at Cisco for six years. And he's worked closely with sales and delivery organizations to accelerate Cisco's consulting capabilities and manufacturing. He's currently a customer success director supporting Ford Motor Company, which is huge, a huge company. And in his role, he focused on driving Ford's businesses, business outcomes through the adoption of Cisco customer success motions and solutions. So John was born in Colombia, South America, and raised in New Jersey. Two great places, by the way. You guys should check them out. <laughs> right away from UCLA with the BS in engineering as an MBA from the University of Michigan. He currently resides in Michigan, Plymouth, Michigan, and he enjoys biking, traveling, playing soccer, and mentoring young men in the community through his local church. So one of his fondest memories is attending the FIFA World Cup final soccer match in 1994. Wow, well, that must have been incredible. So guys, welcome John to give us a sh short webinar on the relevance professional. Hey John, happy to have you. Thank you very much, Reggie. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Um, so as, as Reggie said, um, today's topic is really the relevance of professional etiquette. So we're going to spend the next hour or so together. Reggie read my professional bio to you. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that bio uh, in the context of uh, the agenda we have coming up here. So. Uh, today we're going to talk about what is professional etiquette. You know, uh, it's it's a it's a big word. We're, we're going to define it. We're going to de define it properly, and we're going to define it in practice. Uh, we're going to talk about why it's relevant to you and why it's relevant relevant to your career. And I'm going to give you some tips on the playbook, the what, the how, and the when of professional etiquette. We're going to go through some what's next uh, in terms of your career and where you are, and then we'll have Q and A. And we've scattered Q and A in throughout the 
entire webinar. So for the webinar jam, so you can ask questions, okay? And this is gonna be interactive. I am gonna ask some polls and I'm gonna uh, ask you to, to participate. So look forward to your participation. So um, Reggie read uh, to you my professional bio. This is my non-professional bio or my pictorial bio. As Reggie mentioned, I am from Colombia and it's a little bit of a standing joke in my family of it's Colombia, not Columbia. So uh, Colombia is in South America. It's the one South American country that connects South America to Central America. Uh, I did go to UCLA and I went to U of M and now I'm at Cisco. Uh, I am a father of three kids and work has taken me through 16 various countries. So when we talk about professional etiquette, there is a, there is a cross section of professional etiquette cultural etiquette and personal etiquette. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And then the fun and crazy, uh, you know, Reggie read to you about the 94 World Cup, which is a great, great uh, experience for me. I went with my younger brother, uh, but the, the crazy in my life is is uh, skydiving. So just sharing a little bit about you and there may be a quiz later on, hint, hint, on some of these details, okay? So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, ask to uh, please, um, send the first poll going so you guys can see the first poll and really we're asking ourselves what is professional etiquette so reggie if you can cue that up for us the first poll is live on your window pane so please select which answer applies to you how you behave what is professional etiquette how you behave the way you dress respecting others at work and while we give you guys 30 to 45 more seconds to answer this poll. John, where can you say is, is the craziest place you've gone skydiving from or the most beautiful view you've gone skydiving from? So, so you know, oddly enough, right, so the most of the skydiving I've done is here in, uh, in, in Michigan in a place called Tecumseh. But when you're, when you're that high up, Reggie, you can actually see the bowing of the earth at, you know, 15 or 18,000 feet. So uh, the day that I went, it was a beautiful fall. And you, I mean, you can see the horizon. You can see uh, the Tecumseh is about an hour and a half away from uh, Metro Detroit. And you can see the Detroit skyline from that far up. So it was really an incredible, an incredible experience for me. Uh, ju we just realized there's an error in the poll. So okay. uh, the poll is missing a answer. So we are going to redo the poll with the correct answers available. We just realized that it only had three answers on it. So okay. I'm correct that now for them john okay yeah, you're, no you're, you're you're so high up you can see the bowling of the earth that means the curvature of the earth right exactly yes and so it was, it's a, it's really a beautiful sight and then and then also you know when we look up we see the sky blue and uh but when you're skydiving uh you know you can see the different uh color patterns in the sky but really the the most um the uh the, the one thing that struck me the most is that when you're up there you're really excited and you're screaming. Well, guess what? When you're free falling, all that air is going into your mouth, and literally, it is drying up your mouth. And you're, it, 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 it is, a, it, it's too fast. You can't scream, and your mouth is all dry. <laughs> it's, uh, that, that, so I, yeah, I, that picture was taken. That was actually a videographer that jumped out with us, and uh, I'm trying to scream, but no, there's no, there's no screaming at that altitude. It's just, it's way too fast. Oh, wow. Oh, I, I didn't know that. So I guess I should know that when I, I got <laughs> on streaming. Okay, guys, we reopened the polls and it seems like you guys have all answered. Um, I'll give you about 10 more seconds to put your answer. Again, remember the poll is on the right hand side of your screen. And John, it looks like most of the people here have selected all of the above. So can yeah. you tell us what the right answer is? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So so the, the, you're correct, folks. The right answer is all of the above, right? And um, this is kind of interesting because the, you know, the first answer is about behavior. The second answer is about the way you dress. And then the other, the third answer is about mannerism. So let's look at a more formal definition of professional etiquette. So professional etiquette, friends, is it's a code of conduct. But this code of conduct is written and it's unwritten. And this code of conduct tells us how we interact amongst ourselves in a professional setting. Now, this code is in place, uh, and this is why we do it. It's in place to respect and protect people, time, and processes. 
And we're talking about business processes, okay, in a professional setting. And the reason why it's important to you is because in a sea of interviewees, in a sea of coworkers, you know, proper uh, professional etiquette can give you a very, very big uh, competitive advantage. And I'll, I'll go into some scenarios on how you how you do that. This is this is my definition. This is John's definition of professional etiquette. Okay, it's really an extension of you, because you are the person who is interacting in this setting. All we're doing is we're taking you and we're putting you in a professional setting. And so professional etiquette is, like I said, it's the way you dress, it's the way you behave, the way you speak, it's what you do and what you don't do. And I'm gonna give you some examples of that um, soon, okay? So I think the important thing, uh, Reggie, um, the, the next poll question is about a professional setting. And so I really want to, wanna, we, we need to talk about this setting because if we're gonna execute this code of conduct, we need to understand where are we going to, you know, what is what is a professional setting? That's very important. So if we can queue up the uh, the second poll question, Reggie. The second poll is live. Awesome. So we're getting you guys very active with uh, getting you guys very active with the polling, which is great. Getting you, you know, getting you energized in this webinar jam. So, John, you say you came up with that definition. And to those who don't see, the poll is on the right hand side. Um, so you can select which one is not a professional setting. Keyword, not a professional setting, a career fair, a work meeting, a company blog, or LinkedIn post for families, moving movies with friends and family, or the annual company picnic. So we'll give everyone about 30 more seconds. So, John, you say you came up with your own definition for professional etiquette. How did you come to that? Is it, you, you know, Reggie, it? Yeah, it's you know it's really a compilation of of my experiences throughout uh, my career, and you know um, I didn't you know some of it was by mistake, right? Because I did the wrong thing, or I said the wrong thing, or or I wore the wrong thing. And so when 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 we, when I was able to come in here, and when uh, you know uh, Foundation of the World asked me to to speak on professional etiquette, I'm like, oh yes, absolutely. There's no reason why others have to make the same mistakes that I that, that I made. And so it's it's over the course of my 25 plus years of professional and academic life, and I thought that's it. it's a good synopsis of professional etiquette. Well, that's great. Uh, thanks for that. And it's funny how experience, even both good and bad experiences, have made a positive impact in your life. So I'm very happy to share that with the group. And the group has completed the polls, and the majority has selected movies with family and friends. Absolutely. This is great. So so now we're getting a little bit into the nitty gritty folks. And so, you know, LinkedIn post, that is a professional setting. Uh, the company blog is. And we'll talk a little bit more about these different settings and how to behave uh, in these settings. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to expand a little bit more about the professional settings. So on the left hand side, we have a company dinner. It's a, it could be a business dinner. It could be a lunch or it could be a breakfast. That's a professional setting. Uh, down at the bottom, I have a, a, an icon of Cisco Live. That's a conference. It's a vendor Cisco conference, and that's a professional setting. And then, you know, a conversation around the water cooler at the office. Uh, your professional etiquette is always something that we need to execute and do, uh, even if in an in informal setting like, like water cooler talk. Uh, social media, depending on how you do your profile, and two weeks ago, Karen McDonald did a great, great webinar on, on your brand and how to leverage social media for your brand. And so depending on how you do your brand, me personally, I don't have professional friends on my Facebook account. I keep that separate for family and friends. And so that's why there's a question mark next to Facebook. But LinkedIn is my professional social media platform. And so um, social media is, is, and how you communicate with social media is a professional setting where we have to execute professional etiquette, okay? So I've done a lot of talking and I wanna give Reggie, maybe is there, are there any questions that anybody has right now that we can answer? If not, we'll go to the handshake video. We do not have an answer, a question so far, but okay. I can say that we do have a fan of the poll so far. They love the interaction, which is good. So we're happy. Awesome. So I'm gonna, so Reggie, we can queue up the video and we're gonna watch a three minute video 
on the art of the handshake. I hope you I hope you enjoy it. I, I know I did in selecting this video. All right, the video is starting now, and John and I will go on mute so there's not an echo for you guys. If you're in business, you shake a lot of hands. So what does your handshake say about you and the people you're doing business with? Find out as we count down the top 10 bad business handshakes. Here we go with number 10, the sweaty palmer. A potential deal breaker, you can't escape this nervous, sweaty grip fast enough. Yes, wipe that off. Number 9, the lobster claw. When this person shakes your hand, they pinch your hand between their thumb and fingers. It's as if they're picking up a canopy. Definitely no good if you're allergic to shellfish. At number eight, we've got the fist bump. Nothing says I'm business savvy like a fist bump. And exploding it? Well, that's just not suitable at all, ever. Number seven, the wrestler. He flips his hand on top of yours to assert his dominance. Rumor has it, this is the guy who put the I in T. At number six, it's the Phantom. Wow, that was quick. Let's slow it down to see what happened there. Aha. Uh -huh. Clearly, she's got more important places to be and more important people to see. The Lingerer drops in at number five. There's shaking hands, and then there's holding hands. Obviously, the lingerer has no idea which is which. Awkward. Number four, the decliner. Decliners are fastidious folk. They won't touch a doorknob without sanitizing it, let alone shake hands. Number three, the tickler. Everything appears normal enough, and then something feels a bit odd. It's their middle finger stroking the palm of your hand. In second place, it's the vice. Once you escape the crushing grip of the vice, you can't help but feel sorry for him. He must feel terribly inadequate to shake hands like that. And here it is, the worst of the worst. The bottom of the barrel, the handshake only a mother could love. The dead fish. If handshakes say something about you, this one has to say you're a limp-wristed pushover who's easily battered into submission. Business.gov.au has the tools and templates to help plan, start and grow your business so you don't get off to a shaky start. Kenna, that was hilarious. <laughs> I, 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 Reggie, I know that you've been, uh, you've uh, met a lot of people, so I can imagine you've encountered. Uh, I've, I've encountered almost every single one of those handshakes, which is yeah. hilarious to me. Exactly. So, okay, let's get back to the presentation. Far, my favorite is the pinch. The like, what, what, yeah. What are you doing? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, right. Exactly. So. All right, so we yeah, just people, the video. Uh, love yep. the video, by the way. A lot of people love the video. Okay, great. I'm glad. I'm glad. All right, so, so folks, friends, the handshake is very, very simple, but it can really derail your professional etiquette. It's something that to be taken very, very seriously because it is the first interaction you have with an interviewer. It is the first interaction you have with a potential recruiter at a career fair, uh, or potential your potential first manager on your first day on the job. Uh, or you meet somebody new or, or you meet a client. So the, the tips are you want to do your homework. You want to be aware. You want to be aware of uh, local culture, local business practices. In some Asian companies, we don't shake hands, but we bow. Uh, you also want to be concerned about some uh, so society concerns. So right now we're in a COVID phase of, of our society, right? I think we, we are all aware that the, the whole world is, is uh, uh, open to COVID or exposed to COVID. So we want to be conscious of, okay, are we handshaking or are we not? But it, it's very important that, you know, once this COVID thing is over, that we execute proper handshake and always look the person in the eye. Okay. That is very important. The, the, the second tip on professional etiquette is 
when when you are asked to introduce yourself or when you do introduce yourself, you want to state your full name and your title. Uh, if you're in a bigger room, it's okay to stand up if appropriate. But you want to say, hi, I'm John Lopez. I'm a customer success executive with Cisco. And that way everybody knows your first name and your last name and they know who you are. Okay. Um, if you're a candidate for a certain role, then you want to say, I'm John Lopez. I'm a candidate for the entry data analyst role. Okay. You always want to introduce yourself uh, in with your full name. So the, the, the third thing about uh, uh, professional etiquette in a, I'm calling this a person to person physical setting is about is our dress code. Now the dress code is very important. And, you know, um, two weeks ago, you know, as I mentioned, Karen spoke about your brand, right? So what is the brand? What is your brand? What, what do you, what impression do you want to leave behind with somebody or what, what impression do you want others to have of you on a daily basis at work? Okay. So I put some some famous people here. Maybe some are not so famous. Um, I guess we could say that they're all dressed professionally. And, you know, you need to ask yourself, do I want to be that person with the orange suit? I mean, and the answer may be yes, because maybe you're going into the fashion industry and you want to differentiate yourself, okay? Um, you also need to ask yourself, okay, you know, um, we all, we've all know, we've seen Justin Timberlake. We know of him in, in his performances. Here, he has a black tux. So maybe this is a, a black tie affair. And so that was the appropriate dress code. So when it comes to dressing appropriately, you want to make sure you don't overdress and you don't underdress. And if you're going to a special event, it's okay to ask for a dress code. You know, you can ask your peers, you can ask your manager. Um, if you are in a customer setting, you always want to try to match your customer in terms of their dress code. So for me right now, I'm in a button down long sleeve shirt. If I were going to a customer site today, um, uh, I would probably throw on a sports blazer and at my customer, the jeans are okay. So that would be my professional attire. Um, if you see on the right hand side here, we have a picture of Chuck Robbins, who is our, uh, Reggie and I is our, uh, our, our CEO for Cisco. And he's kicking off uh, Cisco Live. This is directly from Cisco Live. And he's doing it in a golf shirt because the dress code for Cisco Live is, is very casual. Okay, it's business casual. And Chuck is a big golf fan. And so, you know, he always has a lot of golf shirts. If you see Chuck on, on the local news, he's quite frequently on, on the business channels. You'll see him in a in a uh, you know uh, button down shirt and and a, and a jacket. So uh, dress is very important, and you know I just want you to be aware that you know you want to stay within some boundaries of of, of attire, and you want to make sure that you're not the one that's sticking out for either a good reason or a bad reason. Okay. So the other thing about professional etiquette is the way you sit. Folks, it's very, very important. Posture matters. This guy in this picture, he looks pretty bored, right? And so um, the, the the reason that part of professional etiquette is an unwritten code is because a lot has to do with our body language, okay? And so, you know, sometimes uh, when you come into a room, let's say you come into an interview, you know, you just don't sit down. Even though there's a chair for you, you wait to be asked to sit down, okay? And also... If you're in a big conference room, let's say you get invited to a meeting and your manager says, hey, come with me to this meeting. I want you to hear this new presentation on this product we're thinking about launching. You know, if, it, if the conference room is big and there's chairs against the wall and chairs around the, the center of the conference room, um, you, need, you can ask your manager, where should I sit? OK, because maybe if you are presenting, you want to sit at the table. If you're not presenting and just an observant, you want to sit, you know, on the out on the outside edges. So that that's also an unwritten rule of of seating in a conference room setting. The other thing too that is like, you know, uh, is it's a no no is you never pull out the chair for someone. I know sometimes in from a cultural perspective, um, from a family perspective, we pull out the chairs of either people that are younger or people that are older. But if my grandma were next to me, I probably pull out the chair for her to sit down or my mom. But um, in a professional setting, we're all equal. We are all professionals and we can manage our own chairs. And so this sign of, of courtesy that you might do 
isn't really a sign of courtesy. It's kind of a no-no in a uh, professional etiquette setting. The fifth thing on person-to-person -person physical settings on professional etiquette is you really need to be present and you need to be engaged, okay? You know, carry, carry a notebook with you. Uh, take notes uh, during the meeting. And, you know, um, if, you're, if this is a one-to-one -one meeting with somebody or a customer meeting, you want to use replay. You want to say, okay, so I, I, my, my understanding of the requirement is X, Y, Z, or uh, I understood your needs to be uh, like this. Uh, and it's always, uh, it's always important to use replay. But the most important thing is in a professional setting, you know, you need to be present and you need to be engaged. Yes, you will go to meetings where the topics are really, really boring. Reggie and I can attest to that, but you still need to be engaged because if you're not engaged, it's a sign of disrespect and it's a display of poor professional etiquette. Now, the last thing on a meeting is closure, okay? So from a closure perspective is if you're at an interview or if you're having a, a conversation with a customer, then it, it's, it's you know, you, you, you close with a handshake. And this is really, I call this a differentiating opportunity. Here's where you can differentiate yourself, okay? If, if you're talking to a recruiter and that recruiter has interviewed 10 people that day, but if you are the one person that has a, professional handshake, if you're the one person who uh, has great eye contact, and if, if you replay something that maybe the person has told you about them, maybe it's what school they went to, uh, or maybe something of their background, you can close out by saying, oh, I really appreciated you communicating to me about, about you know, where you're from or what school you went to, or, or that you grew up in this part of the country. And so I, 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 this has nothing to do with professional experience. This has nothing to do with degrees. This is all about your professional etiquette. That's why this is so empowering and can really differentiate for you. Okay. So because this is a webinar jam, if this were a, if this were a interview, let's say, and if you were closing out the call with me, or if you're closing out the day, you know, you, you might be able to say, Hey, John, thank you for the interview. It was really neat knowing about blank, you know? And so this is a little quiz for you. You, know, you can just, on the chat, you can let us know what is it that you remember about my, about my introduction? You know, what, what is something that, um, what, what, what is something that you can, uh, that, that you can take away or something that you took away from my introduction? So just, if you could just put it in chat, that would be great. And this is also a, this is also a quiz for me because I, tried to do pictorials to kind of give you and communicate to you a little bit about my background. So this is just an example of, just an example of uh, being able to take a little nugget of, of personal knowledge and personalize it as you close out a, a session. I mean, John, we did give them a hint. We did have a little tete-a-tete -tete over the conversation of your intro. So I'm hoping that they can at least relay that conversation that you and I had to answer this, this question. Yeah, well, and that's okay. This is I know this was kind of an impromptu. It's not a poll question, so uh, but that's okay. We can definitely we can definitely uh, we can we can definitely uh, uh, close out on that part or uh, hit on it a little bit more. So uh, okay. one person called out Colombia, not Colombia. You know what? And and, you, have to and, it, and, it, and if that is if that is if that is that, that's a great chat because now everybody has seen it, and that was probably one of the most. That's one of my pet peeves, at least in our family. It's one of our pet peeves. Oh, that's great. Uh, we, we have this guy experience. That, that's come up a couple of times. Attended the 1994 World Cup, came up a couple of times. And one person also went to a World Cup in Brazil. Oh. So that's a good So there are, there, there, there are some extended family members that have invited to this. So that could be part of, uh, part of the uh, feedback we're getting. All right. So skydiving. By far the the favorite that people remember. That is awesome. That is awesome. Really so good. awesome. So Reggie, uh, let's do a checkpoint. Let's see if there's any questions out there that we can answer. I think I saw one about handshaking in the COVID era. Yes. Yes. There's a question about handshaking in the COVID era. 
Yeah. So, so folks, so, uh, so here's the thing, right? Right now, um, like I said, um, professional etiquette is you in a professional setting, right? So you means who you are. You also means what, what is going on in your community, right? In your part of the state. So if in your community, if you're mayor or if you're, um, governor has said, Hey, we need to execute some type of social distancing and some guidelines from the CDC. Then we apply those guidelines to the professional setting. And so in a COVID area, I think that it is very, um, uh, it's, it's very wise. If you want to carry hand sanitizer with you, if you go into a conference room and when you, before you go into the conference room or you come out of a conference room, definitely use hand sanitizer. Um, if you are a, if you are a high risk person and you prefer to not shake hands, it's okay to say, uh, my preference is to not shake hands because of, of COVID concerns. Okay. And you, you don't need to get specific about, you know, why you're a high risk or anything like that. Um, I think probably one of the things that, uh, we're going to learn here, and I think we're all going to figure this out uh, Reggie, as, as we transition from this COVID area, uh, into the, into our fall in the U S is the, is the coffee. Okay. I think that a lot of times, you know, the coffee, you know, we, we typically do a cough in our hand and I would say that, yeah, we're definitely going to have to use more of our, our shoulders. Uh, we may have to ha carry a handkerchief and then we also definitely want to sanitize our hands as much as possible after, or wash our hands after, um, uh, after a coughing, a coughing scenario. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky, but I think we as a society are going to get through it and we'll still be able to demonstrate professional etiquette. Uh, in process of that. and that that really is what professional etiquette is you guys i mean i i'm gonna put up the the definition again it's it, it's this code of conduct and sometimes this code of conduct is is uh twisted a little bit or enhanced or adjusted given some society concerns and so that's exactly what's happening right now with 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 the COVID scenario we do have one more question john yeah Any any major bad etiquette examples in the world of remote working? For example, camera off or on for, you know, as an example. Yeah, I think, I think that the, 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 the number one, the, the number one etiquette is when you open up your camera at home, you, you're really opening up your home to your coworkers. And that is something that we don't do in a professional setting in the office. Right. And so, uh, you know, it, so you, you, you have to keep in mind, if you open up your camera, you know, how are you dressed? You know, um, you know, how are you, are you putting your hands on your face? Are you putting your hands on your eyes? Uh, who's walking behind you? I think we as a professional society understand that children and dogs are barking, but you know, we don't want people going to the shower and walking out, looking off crazy. And that's just, that's just, that's just a no, no. Um, and then the other thing too, is that, um, because, because we open up our home via the video camera, whatever you have displayed in your house is very important. And so there are some topics in today's society, in, you know, in a professional setting, we typically don't bring in a lot of religion and race or uh, religion, race or politic topics, right? We, we, those are a little bit taboo. I know today we're talking about those with our HR organizations and, and, and that's okay. That's a healthy uh, discussion to have, but you know, if you have, certain artifacts or certain flags or posters in your home, just be aware that you are communicating that to, to whoever is on the, on the uh, other side of the video camera or the virtual session with you. No, okay. that's, that's great. And it also speaks to the session that we had with Karen last week, where part of your professional brand is having the camera on as much as possible. Yes. That shows your brand and shows who you are. So really taking all those things into account, maximizes how you want to come across the people. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. As an example, when, when our, uh, I had a, a virtual session with our uh, chief HR officer at Cisco and she has a, she's a female and she has a big banner on her office says, uh, you know, women vote. Right. And she's a big proponent of women in the workplace and, and women vote. And that's part of her brand. And so that comes out. So you're absolutely right, Reggie, that uh, you can use it to your advantage for branding. Uh, but you need to be, you need to be aware of it. Because if you're, or if you happen to move into a different room or a different location, you may be exposing part of your home or your lifestyle that is something that you want to keep private. Perfect. Awesome. So do not have any more questions at this time, but please remember you can ask your questions in the chat room. 
um, and you can address either privately or uh, make it open to the group. So back to you, John. Awesome. Thank you, Reggie. All right, let's talk about professional etiquette in a different setting, which is a dining setting. Okay, and so I, I a lot, <laughs> Reggie, a lot of these I've learned by mistake, right? And so um, tip number one, try to have a small snack beforehand, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll go to a dinner meeting or you'll have a long conference and they'll say dinner's at six. Well, if dinner's at six, you're not going to get served till about 7.30. And so you want to have a small snack so your stomach doesn't start grumbling and making all kinds of weird noises, okay? Uh, second point is, you know, wait to sit down, okay? Sometimes if you're with a group of people, you just don't rush to sit. Sometimes there's a social hour beforehand or there's some socializing. And so we want to be polite and we just don't want to rush into the, the whole seating. And then this one, this one is, this one, oh gosh, Reggie, I, this one I learned Totally, folks, I learned this really by mistake, right? Which is be familiar with your place settings, right? So if you're going for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, be aware of what's in front of you. So one time I went to a business meeting and I had a setting just like this. And quite honestly, I didn't know where to start. I didn't know where to start. So I brought this out here because sometimes, you know, maybe we haven't been into a formal setting and we need to be aware of this, okay? so. Well, first thing is, you know, the napkin goes on your lap, okay? And then the rule of thumb for your utensils is you start outside in, okay? So whatever they're going to serve you, you know, if it's meant to be eaten with a fork, you start with the first fork on your outside left. If it's something liquid, you start with your first spoon on your outside right. So this is kind of, kind of the rule of thumb. But I thought I'd share this with you because I thought it was important uh, because nowadays, we, we live in such a social society where, you know, there is so much, um, so much business meetings and you, you can have a breakfast interview, you can have a lunch interview and our, our, our schedules are so packed that professionals are really taking advantage of, of, of the dining scenario to conduct business. Okay. okay. So John, what do you say about the dining experience in coming off at work? Like what's the importance of it? I see that's yeah, a yeah. Question. No, that's so, that's a great question. So I, so so um, so Reggie, I have some more tips right after this. So let me get to the next slide, and hopefully, I will answer that that question. Okay. So when it comes when it comes to di the dining experience outside of work, so first thing, folks, is it remember it's a business dinner, right? This is not home. We don't put our bags on top of the table. We don't put our cell phones on top of the table. That's that's not appropriate etiquette. So you want to use the coat room. If you have a book bag, um, you want to you want to if you want to have a book bag, then you want to put the uh, your stuff under the chair. Um, and you know we all carry our cell phones, right? And so it's not good etiquette to just leave your cell phone on top of the table. Um, you know if you have if you're in an interview or if you're in an important meeting and if you're expecting an important phone call, it's okay to say, um, I, as an example, Reggie. Uh, I have an important phone call. I'm waiting for a, a special call from either my home or, or my, my manager. I'm going to leave the phone on the desk in case I get that call, right? And that's that's appropriate cell phone etiquette. When it comes to food, you know, be polite in ordering. You know, don't order the most expensive thing on the menu. Um, my advice to you is avoid messy foods. Yes, crab legs are delicious. We all love them. At least a lot of us do, those that aren't allergic to it. But, you know, they're not appropriate for a uh, for a business meeting. You know, I love spaghetti and meatballs, but I'm not going to tackle that at a business meeting. I'm going to stay clean and simple. Um, my go-to is maybe a chicken or a salmon on a salad, and that's it. Uh, definitely don't order seconds, right? Uh, we're there for business. We're not there for leftovers. So, you know, ordering a to-go box, eh, I don't want to say it's improper, but it's just it could be touch and go. Definitely not in a interview scenario. Definitely not your your first business meal with your manager. You want to stay away from the to, the to go box. And then one other one other uh, uh, unhidden. It's like let's say sometimes the business meetings will split off into different tables, and so you want to wait for everybody at the table to get their food before you start eating. Okay, and that's that's proper etiquette. Now somebody may tell you because if you're at a restaurant and Somebody may order a steak or a chicken or a fish. 
the food may come out at different times. You know, somebody may tell you, oh, go ahead and start eating. I don't want your food to get cold. And so then it's your, it's up to you to actually, you know, uh, you know, uh, start eating or not. That's, that's totally your call. But the rule of thumb is you want to wait for everybody at your table to get their food. Okay. And so sometimes for those that are 21 and over uh, in a, in a business setting, in a business meal setting, uh, there's an opportunity or, uh, to drink. Okay. So folks, this is the most important professional etiquette thing you can take away. This could ruin your career. It can ruin your life. Please, please, please drink responsibly and always, always stay sober. Okay. So if you want to have a glass of wine, perfectly okay to do it. Perfectly okay to socialize. Don't go over your limit. Don't go over your legal limit. Uh, if you are drinking, make sure that you have somebody to ride you home, grab an Uber or a Lyft. Uh, those are all really, really good professional etiquettes in today's society. And then always at the end, you want to make a polite exit from your dinner, from your dinner meeting. If it's a group meeting, you want to say goodbye to everybody. You want to thank the host. Um, from a paying perspective, the host always pays. Uh, it's always good to wait till the last meal is served or the last dessert before you exit. Uh, if you have something urgent, then you want to make sure you tell the host, I have something urgent. I need to leave by 730. I have childcare or I have a, a webinar jam I need to go to. So um, definitely want to execute a proper exit to that to that dinner meeting. Okay. So Reggie, let me stop here and answer the question that was posted earlier in terms of of dinner. Okay, so we have a couple questions. I'll replay the question from earlier. Um, what's the importance of professional etiquette at the dinner table? Absolutely. So, so the important is, importance is that uh, the dinner table, it, it's, it's a business meeting at a dinner table. So in a, it's an extension of the, your, your professional life. So proper etiquette, you know, it, it's still a business setting. And so proper etiquette there, even though we're eating, proper etiquette is going to say this individual is professional. This in individual uh, takes their career seriously. Uh, this individual is respectful. And like I said, remember the, the definition of, of um, professional etiquette, right? It's there to respect people, time, and process. And so it's always maintaining that respect. Even though it's a dinner, it's re maintaining that respect, that professional respect to your colleagues at a dinner meeting. No, that's great. And like you said, it's all about having that professionalism. So you come across as the highest quality or you come across across. Wow. You come across in the best light for both your colleagues and a customer or partner or et cetera. Uh, thanks for that. We do have some nuanced questions that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. When do you place the napkin on your lap? So typically the napkin goes on the lap when you first sit down. OK, because once you first sit down, there may be some water already in your water goblet or or so really you always want to place a napkin down. As soon as you sit down, you want to place a napkin down. If you have to if you have to take off and uh, go to the restroom or get up, you take the napkin off and you can either place it on your setting right next to the uh, to the plates and the utensils if there's space or you can leave it on your chair. OK, we have some nuanced questions again. Some women are anti putting their purses on the floor. Is it okay to hang it on the chair? I personally have a purse hook made for this, but I'm asking for when I forget. Yeah, so I think so. I think the uh, definitely the uh, purses are kind of a, um, and I know there's a lot of personal information in there. If if you're totally against it, you really have to look at the setting, right? Uh, if the setting allows you, if you see others doing it, then I think it's a it's a good rule of thumb to say, okay, I'm going to follow the uh, the practice of this business setting. Um, there are some settings where the seats have covers on them and it's not appropriate. So I think that's just a judgment call. I don't know if there is a, a right or wrong. I think it's a judgment call. But definitely if you have something against that, I, and I know some floors, because of the floor thing, it, it, there, it some people could find it um, not the most sanitary. So I think that one is just a judgment call, Reggie. What if I'm not and I've ordered is it still inappropriate to us? Yeah. So, so if, if you're not, if you're not hungry, you definitely want to try a little bit of the food because remember that it's a business dinner. So if every, the idea is for everybody to eat, to eat together, 
and to converse business topics, right? So you wanna you wanna eat on it a little bit. Um, my rule of thumb would be that if if this is an interview, if this is early in your in your in your professional career with this group or these people, I would say stay away from the two go box. Okay, if you are the only person uh, getting a two go box, then that's gonna be that's not gonna look well. Okay, and so. If this is a group where you, you're a bona fide person, you're a bona fide team member, you've been able to demonstrate your professional etiquette, and you know you just had a big lunch and you go out to a, di- a business a dinner and you have three quarters of your steak is there, then in that scenario it would be okay to order a two go box. They know you; it's an exception. We just don't want to come off as being greedy uh, when it comes to our professional etiquette at a business dinner. Another question we have is, what about talking at the dinner table? Absolutely. Uh, Talking at the dinner table, it's a business dinner, right? It's made for conversation. And it's also, it's made for you. It's made for you to differentiate yourself. And so, you you know, you you can absolutely talk. You don't want to be a a chatterbug and not let others eat, but you definitely want to socialize the eating with the talking because that's what it is. It's a, it's a business meeting. So if there, there may be a topic that is relevant that needs to be discussed, if not, it's an opportunity for you as an individual to demonstrate your brand and to get to know your colleagues or to get to know your customer and and to socialize because it is a social hour, but we're conducting business topics. And so you want to blend in the professionalism with the socialism, with the fact that we all have to eat. So we need to, you know, do a little trade off between all those three objectives. Awesome. That's, that's great. And that was our final question so far. So back to you, John. Okay. Awesome. Great. Great questions. You guys really appreciate that. Okay. So some other professional etiquette, some other tips. Um, most offices, when we get back to work, have an office policy, an office policy. Um, sometimes they're posted. Sometimes they're not. But there's there's typically an office policy. Okay, so just make sure you follow that. Um, the do not cross professional etiquette is really about, as, as I mentioned, respecting people, uh, processes, uh, and time. So you want to make sure you don't cross those boundaries. Okay, so you you don't want to cross those um, professional boundaries. You also don't want to cross the personal boundaries. Right? We all have a personal envelope around us. So you know if if somebody if somebody uh, uh, puts either their hand on your shoulder, that's crossing that boundary. We, we, we don't do that in professional etiquette, you know, ever. Okay. Um, the middle picture here talks about all the social media, the YouTubes, the Facebooks. Remember, especially for the newer generation, the millennials, the, the, the folks that are coming into the workforce today, right? Your social platform, your social life is an extension of you. And so you need to be careful. Uh, recruiters do use social media to do research on you. And so in a professional environment, if you invite your colleagues and coworkers to that platform, that social platform, they'll be able to see all that, okay? So just keep be aware of that. Um, Thank yous, always be polite, always say thank you. Uh, I have a smiley face, we always smile. Okay, everybody wants to see a warm, warm smiley face. Um, For this generation also, you should not communicate either verbally or written in a way that is going to make the other person have to go to Urban Dictionary to find out what you said, okay? So there's gonna be a little quiz on that later, but we definitely wanna uh, not, we wanna not write a cause in our recipient to go to Urban Dictionary. Uh, when it comes to also to professional setting, I'm sorry, professional etiquette, is really around also, we talked about a lot of, about our attire, but it's also about our, our hair and our facial hair or not. And in today's world, there really isn't a norm, okay? You just have to look professional, okay? And so I have two pictures here. One is of Trey Boynton. This is her uh, LinkedIn profile. Her hair looks very different. She's got a great smile on her. She, le- she leads up our uh, diversity and inclusion of for Cisco. Wonderful person. She's helping us a lot with what's going on in our society today. Um, she looks much different than the gentleman uh, to the right with the, with the big old lumberjack beard, right? Um, his name is Thomas Wood. That's his LinkedIn profile. Th- Thomas is a, he's a security ninja for Cisco. 
And when, when, you, when you're a security ninja at Cisco, you know, you wear a beard. That's part of your brand. It's part of who you are. And so both individuals look very different. They look very professional. Uh, but, you know, they're also emulating part of their brand. Okay. So when it comes to your, your, your personal attire and your grooming, just keep in mind that it, that is also part of your professional etiquette. And it's also more in terms of what brand do you want to uh, communicate to others. So we have our third poll question here, Reggie. We're getting to the top of the hour. This is the last one, you guys. Definitely, definitely appreciate you hanging with us. Reggie will get this poll live for us. And this is another um, an example of, you know, what is an example of proper professional etiquette? Okay, so this is the final quiz. And I appreciate you all uh, participating and hanging with the, uh, with the webinar. Remember, guys, keyword is proper. Proper, exactly. This is like those SAT questions where they try to trip you up with that one word. Yes, that's why I, that's why I underlined it on the on the slide here, Reggie. Totally <laughs> underlined it. Because I want like, yeah. like uh, but you guys are two for two on the poll questions today. So let's make it a perfect three for three and finish the night on a high note. So Absolutely. let's give you about 10 more seconds to answer the poll questions. Uh, you have texting during an interview using LOL. Oh my God, talk to you later in an email solid handshake with eye contact, talking about politics, religion in the office, having too much wine at a dinner party. And the overwhelming majority have voted for solid handshake with eye contact. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, I, you guys you guys got the hang of this, okay? Um, when, once COVID ends and we learn how to shake hands again, you guys are gonna be leaders in your interviews, in your work. Uh, really, really, really great insight, you guys. Um, Part of the D, right, there are times where talking about politics and religion or society concerns is okay in the office if it is a topic that's being led by uh, by your HR group or by your manager. In today's world, there's a lot going on with the social events in our country, in the U.S. And so if there's a special meeting that's there to discuss that, then in that scenario, in that setting, uh, it's okay to do that. But, you know, on your own, talking about the stuff, it's just a little taboo. Stay away from it. Do yourself some favors. All right. So we're getting here on the home stretch, and I'm going to try to leave one or two minutes at the end for some questions. Um, but really, when it comes to professional etiquette, you know, you are who you are. Be your authentic self. You know, be polite and engaging, and be mindful. Okay. The key word is mindful, right? So of how you impact others. And that's what professional etiquette is about. It's about respecting people, process, and time. Uh, and get feedback. Okay? And so get feedback from your peers. Get feedback from, from a mentor. Get feedback from somebody that you trust in your academic career or in your professional career. Always, always get feedback. So what's next for you is really, you know, there's a little bit of a preparation and planning uh, as, you, as you enter either the workforce or you enter a, a um, career fair season, or you enter into a recruiting season, uh, and you can practice. You can really practice a lot of this professional etiquette on your own. Uh, and if you follow some of these tips, and if you're mindful, I, am, I have full confidence you're gonna be right on track for success. So Reggie, I think on that one, I'm just gonna leave everybody here with, we have you know the definition of GEN, I want everybody, the key takeaway, remember, is professional etiquette is you in a professional setting. And when I say you, it's all about you, meaning the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you behave, and what you do and what you don't do. And so at this point, Reggie, I, I, let me, let's see if there's any other questions. If not, we can go through some resources that are here at the end for the, uh, for the participants that are part of this presentation. They can do some more research. I do not see any questions. I, I, I want to comment and applaud you on such a well done uh, webinar. I think one of the biggest takeaways on my side, at least, is how important communication is in professional etiquette. I think that's probably the baseline of everything we spoke about. Um, you know, figuring out what's appropriate, it's always easier to do when you're communicating with someone. It's completely normal to say, I don't know or I don't understand. Exactly because people are going to take that as a sign of respect 
and empathy and be able to inform you like, oh, you can sit here or what can I say? I don't know where to sit or should I sit down or is it appropriate to put my, my, my stuff here? At the end of the day, we're all trying to communicate and work together. So I think that's one of my key takeaways is the importance of communicating and making sure that you're clear with people um, about your intent as well as understanding the situation that you're in. Yeah, absolutely, Reggie. And I think and I think it's 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 being able to humble yourself to say, I, I don't know. And and that's okay. You know, it really is okay because it could be a first event and and that that also communicates that you want to improve yourself. Okay. And so which is a, a very, very good sign. If 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 I know there's a, somebody that always wants to improve themselves, they're asking me questions, and I, I'm thinking, hey, this is somebody that I would want on my team later on. You know, somebody that I like to work with. And so those are all positive signs of um, demonstrating and really, uh, you know, executing professional etiquette in a professional setting. We do have some kudos to you. Excellent responses. Very informative and well executed. Great job. I, I see some emojis. <laughs> oh, okay. We can do emojis. Okay. Excellent. Well, I'm well, glad. I'm glad. This is, maybe this is the last question. When is it appropriate to use emojis? Oh, okay. So, um, you know, if if it if it's a um, if your company has a messaging system uh, in terms of like you know like we use WebEx Teams at Cisco. Uh, sometimes you can demonstrate an emoji. For example, hey, we just want a proposal, a little smiley face or a thumbs up in a messaging system. I would really stay away from emojis and emails. Uh, I would definitely stay away from emojis and you know if there's a company blog, right? Because company blogs go out to a larger broadcast. And so if it's if it's a one to a few or one one to one or one to a few, then maybe like a thumbs up or a smiley face. Uh, that's that's the level of emoji that I would I would execute. Um, and if you follow that, you know, if your team uses more emojis, then that's OK. You'll definitely you, you'll see what everybody else does and then you'll be able to you know do, do things differently. But, uh, yeah, I would stay with the with the simple ones and only on messaging. And here's the last one. And I know this is very big at Cisco and this is important nowadays. How do you stay true to yourself and be different while also conducting yourself professionally in a and using professional etiquette? No, that's a big one for I know my generation because we we kind of work differently than the previous generation. And I think it's going to continue coming down the pipeline. Yeah. So I think I think that, you know, when when you look at when you look at professionals, um, you know, if you have three degrees, there's probably somebody that has four. Uh, if you went to the, if you went to the best school on the East coast, there's probably somebody that went to the best school on the West coast. Right. So really the way you differentiate yourselves is by your uniqueness, right? Your background, who you are. Okay. And part of that is where I said that, you know, professional etiquette is about you. And so if there's a history of family, if there's a history of culture, if there's a history of ethnicity, if there's a history of experiences, then you can bring that to bear in your professional etiquette. Okay. And so that's what I've tried to do here today, given, you know, my background and, and, you know, the countries I've been to and, you know, my, my, my ethnic background, my cultural background, my scholastic background, it, it you know, the way you differentiate yourself is by taking all those unique points and blending them together. Perfect. And I think that's the perfect way to end the webinar. So awesome. ladies and gentlemen, thank you, John, for joining us, hosting a wonderful webinar on the importance of professional etiquette. As you can see on the screen in front of you, we do have more webinars on here. We have four more webinars, actually. We actually moved the webinar to next week. So we have two webinars this week. John completed this webinar, so we have one more tomorrow. So please, please join us tomorrow, same time, same place. And then we also have two webinars next week, one on Wednesday and one on Thursday as well. And then the following week, we have our last webinar in this series. But don't be sad because we will be coming out with more webinar series in the future because you guys have been so, uh, you guys have appreciated them. I keep giving you more of what you want. Uh, with that being said, we wish you guys a wonderful night. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you again to John. Wonderful job. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.